hates him. She dislikes him. She, she, don't, she, don't wanna, she doesn't want to stay with him. He, however, he used to follow, follow her in the street in Mecca. Prophet Muhammad, he said to his companions, are you not amazed? Look how much so-and-so he loves his ex-wife and look how much she hates him. Yes? So he went to her. He said, oh, so-and-so, why don't you go back to him? She said, oh, messenger of Allah. She believed he's a messenger of Allah, the Almighty. She said, oh, messenger of Allah, is this a commandment from God? Or you try to mediate? Again, if he was a liar, he, would, he wants to manipulate the people. Remember, that's his friend. What he could have done, he said, no, that is from God, and you should go back to my friend. But he said, no, that's not from God. I'm just trying to help. If you don't want to go back, don't go back. Look to this trustworthiness, truthfulness, and honesty of this individual, you know? So that's the first thing. They are known to be trust, trustworthy, truthful, and honest. Second one, they come with the same message. The message, that they go in, the message that goes in line with our sound reasoning, natural inclination, that you worship one God, the creator of everything, the almighty, the one who has no partners whatsoever, the one that everything is in need of him. He's not in need of no one. And likewise, the other one that speaks about, uh, uh, came with, the, the same message that prophets and the messengers came with, is about prophethood. Also, about day of judgment. The other one, prophecies. I'm going to give you some prophecies to show you as a Muslim, when we, as a Muslims, when we believe Islam is the truth, not because I had a dream. I had a dream, Prophet Muhammad appeared to me, he said Islam is the truth, therefore Islam is the truth and you should accept it. No, that dream, if it did happen to me, that's called personal experience. And that cannot be a universal criteria for my belief. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yes. So for Islam, what, what, what distinguishes Islam from Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Islam has universal proofs. So the prophecy that Prophet Muhammad said, alayhi salatu salam, he said, there will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man competing in building tall buildings. What you have to understand, sister, when the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that, back in those days, there was not any indication to indicate that the Bedouins, the Arab Bedouins, that will start competing in building tall buildings. Because Prophet Muhammad, as you know, existed 1,400 years ago. So let me ask you now, where is the tallest building in the world? Tallest building in the world? Yeah. Um, UAE. UAE, you're right. UAE, you're right. We've got a spot on. It's in Dubai. Dubai, yes. Now, Dubai, 20, 40 years ago, was a pure desert, let alone 1,400 years ago. So the question we ask ourselves, how man that existed 1,400 years ago prophesizing about something that we can see now? You know, that's why I'm bringing rational proofs what Islam is the truth. Now I'm going to give you tangible proofs. Look, who's competing with them? It's Saudi. Another prophecy. Prophet Muhammad said, who will come a time, alayhi salatu salam, is going to come a time when you see, when interest, you know, interest usually, yeah. yeah, will become widespread even if you are not involved directly, will affect you. And now by default, if you open a bank account, you get involved in interest. So there was no any indication during his lifetime for a man to say that will happen. Now we can see it right now in front of our eyes. You don't have to be a Muslim or a Christian to observe that. You know, you can see that. How he knew that? Because he was a messenger of Allah. From the all, he, he was sent by the Almighty. By the way, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Moses. I believe in all of them. But what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to establish Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet. Because if I do establish Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet with a rational argument, with a tangible argument, what is next? To accept what he came with. Because the Almighty will not send a liar to convey his message. And I will just mention this very important uh, principles in Islam. Principles in Islam. We say Islam came to preserve five things. And we call them Adaruriyat, universal necessities. So Islam came to preserve religion. That's why paganism, polytheism, atheism, because when you don't have God in your life, you have no objective morals, no objective criteria. You're just following desires, you understand? Second one, Islam came to preserve intellect, to protect and preserve intellect. That's why alcohol, wine, alcohol is forbidden. You know, drugs is forbidden. Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why gambling interest is forbidden. Islam came to preserve family ties, marriage, especially marriage, very important Islam between the husband and the wife. Yes, that's why fornication and adultery is forbidden. So Islam, if we preserve these five things, no doubt we'll have a good life. Doesn't mean perfect because we are human beings. However, the opposite of these five things, what is it? When you have paganism, or before I talk about paganism, alcohol, is it good for us or bad for us? It's bad. 
individually and collectively. As in Britain, every year they spend like over 2.1 billion money because of alcohol, because people having diseases and, and so on. And majority of crimes has been carried out because of alcohol, you know? And we can see when you go nightclub, I mean, I'm saying people go nightclub, by the way, yeah? <laughs> Let's make it clear. When you go nightclub and outside people come out, what do they do? They start fighting each other. They start going crazy, because it's not there. So Islam, likewise, so that's about uh, alcohol, yeah? About gambling. Gambling, no doubt, is bad for us. Gambling makes you bankrupt. Gambling makes people go steal from each other just to gamble, makes you ha uh, homeless. Likewise, interest. Interest make, make the rich richer and the poor poorer. Never thought of that. Yes, I'll give you an example of that. Imagine you're poor. So you come to me, I have a bank. So what I'm going to say to you, I'm going to give you 60 pounds. Yeah, I just pay you. Anyway. Yes, you know what, watch this. I'm going to give you 60 pounds, but by two weeks, give me the money. But I know that by two weeks, you're not going to give me the money back. So what I'm going to say, give me extra. Then I say, look, by five, four weeks, give me 50 pounds extra. I know you're going to do that. So what I'm doing, imagine I'm doing the same thing to millions of people. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm enslaving them and making myself richer. Yeah. You see, that's what interests yeah. forbidden because why Islam teach us love to love each other. If my brother or my sister is in need, I should not utilize her need, her necessity to manipulate her. Rather, give her money. I said, look, take the money, give it to me whenever you want. Rather than Islamic teaching, if she, she doesn't have the money to give back, forgive her. And if you're able to give her more, give her more. Because as a Muslim Ummah, Muslim nation, we are like, a, like a one body. Prophet Muhammad, he said about the Islamic nation, is like one body. If any part of the body feel pain, the whole body feel pain. So if you're my sister in Islam and you're going through a hardship, then I start feeling pain for you because you're my sister. It's like one body. So I have to do everything according to my ability to help you. You understand? Yeah. So the other one as well is about, as like I said, fornication, adultery, destroy families, destroy marriages. So now, these five things that destroy societies around the world, not just being allowed, rather it's being encouraged, motivated, but in a on the other hand, this is destroying our lives. Why? Because some people who are in power, they are making money and profiting from the suffering of the people. That's why, sister, there's two types of people who hate Islam. There's two types of people who hate Islam. Either that are ignorant or those who are in power. Let me make it clear. Imagine from London, and I have banks which do interest. I have shops of alcohol, gambling, and so on, yeah? And you come as a Muslim, teaching people about Islam, how I'm going to look at you? I'm going to look at you as my enemy because you're going to make me go bankrupt. You understand? Because I know you're a good woman. You want, you want good for the people. But what I'm going to do, because I'm a rich man, I'm going to utilize my wealth through media to make you look bad and what you're calling to is bad. But even though I just broke it down for you, what Islam comes with is good for us individually and collectively. That's why those who are in power, the rich ones, they have, they're very hostile toward Islam. When I want to say rich one, I'm not talking about every rich person, but those who are making money from the suffering of the people, they will utilize anything to make Islam look bad, even though Islam is the best way of life. And to mention something else, how men that existed 1,400 years ago, who couldn't read and write, and he never went to any college university, is able to come with this perfect legislation. But yet, we have these politicians around the world, they study in the best universities, Harvard universities, North Carolina universities, Oxford universities, Cambridge universities, yet they cannot resolve the problems that we, fa we are facing today. But we have one man, existed 1,400 years ago, who has every solution for every problem that we are facing with. As a Westerner, what do you want me to understand about modesty in dress? Because Before that, I will come to that. Firstly, what I said so far, does it make sense? Yes. Clear? Yes. You see? So, you see, look, look. When you look, that's, that's the teaching of Islam. So, Islam, when you, for, for example, let's talk about modesty. When Allah legislated for a woman to cover herself, not because Allah hates the woman, because Allah is the creator, created you and me. So, therefore, when Allah legislates something, because He wants good for us. Okay? For example, imagine, to make that clear to you. Imagine I made this phone. I'm the, I'm the first person to make this phone, yeah? I'm the maker. So in order for you to know about the phone in details, what is good for it, what is bad for it, who you come to? Um, to me, I'm the maker. Right. Yeah, I'm the creator. Yeah. Maybe if you go to the... And maybe I will tell you certain things about the phone, how to deal with it, 
Maybe you're not going to like it, but you still accept it. And you say, you know, it makes sense because he is the creator of the phone. And maybe if you go to the butcher or uh, you go to a doctor, uh, he will tell you something that you like, but you're not going to trust him because he's not the maker of the phone. So likewise, logically speaking, when Allah, sorry, when Allah legislated for a woman to dress modestly, to cover herself, because Allah knows his creation. He knows the outcome of not dressing modesty. You understand? I mean, like, uh, I've done my research from non-Islamic sources. You know, the, 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 because some people, they want us to live in a Disney world. They say, no, let women dress the way she likes and the man should control himself. No, there's no doubt. There's no justification for rape. There's no justification. However, if I know, I'm going to come. Listen to this, yeah? If right. I know, if I'm going to come now. Watch this. I'm going to let you speak. Yeah? If I, I imagine I'm now, if I know, if, imagine I have twenty thousand dollars in my suitcase, and I come to everyone now. I don't know everyone. I know them, but I'm saying like for the sake of argument. And I, only, I, I open the suitcase in front of everyone, and the people start taking my money. Yeah, you expect them not to grab the, it, but. But you can't. You're not, foolish. That's it. So, because why? They should not do it. Do it. They shouldn't. But the reality that we have the to reality. deal with, you understand? I so, agree. so I what agree. comes in from the other angle? Yes, they should not do that. But we, we have to be realistic, and that's the yes, beauty of Islam. Be the beauty of Islam, sister, make you face the reality. Doesn't give you fake dreams. The reality that there's people out there evil. When they see the woman undressed, they want to do crazy stuff. So even so, what is Allah said? dress this way not because Allah wants to oppress women rather Allah wants to honor the woman Allah wants to protect the woman because when human beings give you legislation they're not gonna give you legislation to protect you especially if they have this they have desires they have sickness in their heart they're gonna legislate something because that legislation goes in line with the agenda but when the creator legislates something there's not any doubt because it's the all wise the most wise he will legislate something which is perfect for you and for me no agenda no, thank you, no agenda. Make sense? Yes. Let me give you an example, sister. Imagine I said to you, look, sister, imagine you're in a house, may Allah forbid, yeah? And you are surrounded with a fire. You surround the fire. You're about to die. You try your best to save yourself. But you couldn't save yourself. And I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me at least? I would call you a savior. Would you call me, thank, would you thank me? Yeah. Would you remember me all the time? Of course, you're going to say to me, Shamsi, you know, let me think if I'm going to say thank you or my savior or, 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 or let me remember you. Straight away, you're going to say thank you. Okay, what about the one that gave you life for free? Who has given you life for free? Why we don't thank him and why we are not grateful to him all the time? Oh, you don't think of it. You see, I, of yeah, course. Yeah, you take your life for granted. For granted. You know what Allah said in the Quran? وَإِن تُعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you try to count Allah's blessings, Allah's favor upon you, you will never be able to do so. A man came to one of our early scholars, Islamic scholars. He said, oh, so and so, I'm poor. He said, you're not poor. He said, I am poor. He said, I will give you two million pounds for your eyes. Would you, uh, would you give it to me? Two million dirham. He said, no. He said, I will give you five million for your arms. Would you give it to me? He said, no. Oh, for your kidney? He said, no. no. He said, you are rich, but you don't know. These are your values. You see? But he said, you are rich, but you don't know. Oh. You see how rich? That's what our Prophet Muhammad told us to visit the graveyard, also to visit the sick people. When you see the sick people, you appreciate the life. You appreciate you are able to walk. And Allah created this life. So let me tell you why Allah created this life. One of the reasons, one of the wisdoms is for us to worship Him. Not because it's in need of our worship, because He deserves our worship, and because for us to have a good life, we have to worship Him. Not because it's in need, okay? The second one is a test for us. That's why Allah tests the rich people with the poor people. Allah tests the healthy people with the unhealthy people. Allah tests the strong people with the poor people. Allah tests the kings with their followers. So it's a test for all of us. Everything is a test. How, how, how well Allah wants to see you, how you're going to behave. And the biggest test is when you follow Allah and you turn away from the devil and you worship your creator the way he should, we should be worshiped alone. Likewise, the other wisdoms of Allah creating us to implement his names and attributes. He has the attributes of mercy, he has attributes of love, he has attributes of mighty, he has attributes of power, he has attributes of anger. However, Allah will not implement his name's attributes except 
based upon justice. That's why based upon Allah's anger, he created the hellfire. Based upon Allah's mercy, he created paradise. And Allah said, Are we going to make equal those who do righteous actions with those who are wrongdoers? Never. That's why Allah is the most just. And this life is a test. How many people left their houses, they never come back. How many people won't sleep, they never wake you, up. What happens over here? Here is a place when everyone preach, Christians, Muslims, and everyone. Oh, understand? Is that yeah. good? Or? In, in a way, yeah, to be honest, in a way it's good, but in the other way it's bad because why is allowing anyone to speak? Some people don't have enough knowledge and they speak about Islam or about Christianity, same thing. So the problem is a good in a way, but it's a, it has a side effect too. You understand? But so there's one thing I want to remind you with, sister, yeah, and remind myself and everyone here that one day we're going to die. There's nothing guaranteeing this life except death. That's why Allah challenged people with death. Like I was saying, how many people left their houses? He says to my, his wife, I'm coming back. He didn't make it. How many people won't sleep? He said, he said to his friend, tomorrow we'll meet up. He didn't make it. So we have to prepare for ourselves. Have you been to Algeria? Okay, imagine now you're gonna go to Algeria, or Morocco, Tunisia, in North Africa, because I'm from that side, North Africa. So imagine you wanna go there, the first thing that you're gonna do, of course, as a man, as a woman with a sound reasoning, check the currency, which currency they use. You have to learn which currency they use, okay? Is it safe country, is it cold country? You're gonna study and do research beforehand. The foolish one, the one who says, when I get a deck, I come to know. But the person, the wise person, step back and think and do research. Likewise, one day we're going to travel from this life to another life. We have to think. I never thought of that. You like this example? Yeah. Yes, alhamdulillah. So what we, that's why I'm here, to explain to people why is Islam, to tell them Islam is for everyone and the correct way to, to, be, to be connected to your creator, to worship him. Now, let me ask you this question. If you want to buy a gift, imagine you want to buy a gift for your mother. Would you buy a gift that you love or your mother love? Likewise, if you want to worship the Creator, we should worship Him the way He loves, not the way we love. Because the way He loves is objective. The way we love is subjective. That's why He sent the prophets and messengers to teach us about His worship and what is the best guideline for mankind. And that's why I'm giving you an open invitation. It's up to you to become a Muslim, to worship your Creator. Muslim mean, in English word, someone that submits to God. Someone says, I bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad the Messenger of Allah, meaning I should worship my Creator for everything He has given me, rather our Creator, our own existence by His virtue, our own existence, everything. That's why we need the Quran, the Quran is a powerful book and one of the miracles of the Quran that the arguments and the intellectual arguments, tangible arguments that has been used in the Quran, you know, it's like it gives you a bang into the intellect and wakes you up, yeah, it's true. It's a powerful argument. If someone saved your life, you would thank them. If someone gave you life, do you thank them? See, uh, yeah, see, of course. Yeah. So that's what Allah said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned arguments, Allah said, for example, Allah said, for example, Allah is telling you, sister, telling me, reflect upon the creation. Have you not seen how Allah created the camel? The way the camel has been designed is, is perfect. The, the camel has a layer that protects it from the, 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 the sand. Because when it's a uh, uh, when the storm and, yeah. and, and so on, you know, the sun will cut your eye. But the, the camel has a layer that protects it from that. The camel's feet, the way it's been designed, doesn't go into the, the, the sand. And Allah always, also Allah said, look at the sky. Look at the earth. We have a nose next to our mouth before you eat, you smell food. So no natural selection. None no of that. That's, that's, Darwin. Darwinian evolution yeah. is a fake thing that try to turn people away from their creator. You know, it's a nonsensical thing, seriously. Not because I'm a Muslim, I study it, you know, about it. Doesn't make any sense. Sister, imagine now, I said to you, look, watch this, the brother's, uh, this is brother Anwar's argument, by the way, yeah? Watch this, I'm gonna tell you. If I tell you this phone was made by a rock, would you accept that? Okay, rock has a power, rock has energy, as I say, yeah? But it's impossible, illog illogical, irrational. It is no way for a rock to create this iPhone, well programmed and everything yeah? yeah now if I said this phone was made by a child that is two years old no way you, even though sister even though you haven't seen the person who made the phone he's still from the unseen because there's two up unseen there's a, a, an absolute unseen and there is a relative unseen meaning 
I haven't seen the person who made it, but it is, my daughter is calling me, you know. <laughs> MashaAllah, Aisha. So, so now, I haven't seen the person who made the phone, but by analyzing, by use, using the sound resume that the creator has given me, and nation, I know it's impossible a child make this phone. Okay, the other option, I'll tell you, who made this phone is someone who has PhD how to make a phone. Would you accept that now? Yes. Okay, which one is more complicated? Which one is more sophisticated? This phone or your own creation? Or our, the universe? Without any doubt. That's why Allah, the best argument is in the Quran. What is it called? The argument of the creation. Allah always utilizes it. So what I would say to you, if Islam makes sense to you, is it clear to you, I'm inviting you to become Muslim. I'm not, if it makes sense to you, that's what I do all the time. Yesterday I was in Cardiff. I was, you know Cardiff? Uh, Wells. Wells? Huh? Wells, well, well. yeah, it was, yeah, it was. Uh, I was in Cardiff, someone became Muslim, alhamdulillah. He was an English guy. Two days ago, a brother met me, he was Irish. He said, I like your videos, because we have a channel. He said, I've been watching your videos, Islam makes sense to me. I want to become Muslim right now. You know, that's the beauty of Islam. Islam, look, you agreed, you agreed with me everything I said. Do you know why? Because what I said is the revelation from the Creator has given us, the meaning of it, yeah? And you have something like called natural inclination and a sound reasoning. So the, crea the same Creator who created that sound reasoning and natural inclination is the same Creator who sent down that revelation. So when you bring them together, they go hand to hand, click in. And that's what happened. I'm bringing the argument to you and, and your natural inclination and sound reasoning just clicking like this, perfectly. Harmony. 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 Why? Because the Almighty Allah, is. The, that's what it means. It means the one who created everything is the same one who sent Prophet Muhammad with that revelation. For example, ima again, imagine I'm the first person to make a phone. The brother Jemma said, no, he made the phone. No one made the phone before me. So brother Jemma made the claim, he made, he made the phone. Another brother said, Muhammad, he said, I made the phone. So you send the African, okay, all of them making a claim. He's going to give you his guideline. The guy is going to give you his guideline. I'm going to give you my guideline. You, you, you utilize the guidelines. It literally is not working with the phone. The phone, I'll give you the guideline, go perfect. So you know, Shamsi. You see? Likewise, we look to Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism. doesn't go in line with our sound reasoning, natural inclination. But when it comes to Islam, perfect. Click in. Yes, I see. So that's why I'm inviting you to Islam. You know, when you become Muslim, you know you have a purpose. Now you are connected to your Creator. Now you have the now you, you have the real meaning and the true meaning of purpose. Because the Creator has created something within us. Nothing will fulfill it except to connect it to the Creator. When you pray, Islamically, the way we pray, we bow down, prostrate, because we submit all our physical body and spiritual to the Creator. We don't just do this. No, no. We bow down, prostrate, stand up, stand up like this, look down to, to make sure our physical limbs and our spirit, our spirit both of them submit and surrender and humble itself to its Creator, the Almighty. Likewise, Islam, Islamic legislation, charity. How many people complain about poverty, poverty? Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, who existed 1,400 years ago, he came with the best legislation. If you follow his legislation, you will see maybe poverty and there, but poverty will be removed. And I will show you one of the problems when you start following human desires. Watch this. Rape is illegal, correct? Selling drugs is illegal, correct? Stabbing people is illegal. Holding guns, shooting each other for no reason is illegal, yes? However, around the world, in America, Britain, France, around the world, bringing people who are these singers. These singers will give them ridiculous money to bring them to our countries and facilitate everything for them to promote and glamorize what? Murder. To, to whom? To, to the children, young age. Then, on one hand, we say to the children, young age, do not carry a knife, do not smoke drugs, do not disrespect women. On the other hand, I'm paying ridiculous money to singers who glamorize, promote all of these devices. Look at the contradiction. And that's the beauty of Islam. You will never see the contradictions. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, if this book, I mean the Quran, the holy book of Muslims, if it was from other than Allah, you will see a lot of discrepancies, a lot of contradictions. But it's not from 
other than Allah. It is from Allah. That's why it's a perfect way of life. But when you look to this liberalism and this democracy and so on, you see the contradiction. They, they say because of freedom. Yeah, but freedom has to be restricted. I'm not going to say freedom. One hand, I teach my children, don't know rape, don't know to disrespect women. On the other hand, I bring a singer. Yeah, sing to him how to disrespect a woman. Yes. My son said, look, my father, you, you, you have nothing to stand on. How can you tell me to not do that and you're paying these people ridiculous money and then we complain why there's poverty? It's difficult, you know, freedom of speech and then you know, the glorification of violence. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Look, look, what you have to do, they, they, what's happening, sister? So to cut you, yeah? Uh, what's happening? There's people out there, they want to manipulate us and they know how to do it by using very beautiful slogans. Freedom. Anyone hate freedom here? No one has freedom. Everyone has freedom. But there's a meaning behind it. Like, you know, when the, these extremist Muslims who go around killing kill innocent people, what do they call it? Jihad. In Arabic word, jihad means is, is Islamic terminology. Striving, struggling, fighting for the cause of Allah to defend. So when you hear jihad, but this guy's not doing jihad. He's killing innocent people. He's causing corruption upon the earth. But what he did, he utilized a term which is very attractive to people. That's what's happening. Freedom of uh, woman's freedom. I love that. I want to be free. But the true freedom, do you know where is it, my sister or sister? The true freedom is to worship your creator. And the true slavery, when you follow your desires. That's the meaning. You see it? Yes. Yeah, so now, if I make sense to you, clear to you, I will invite you to become Muslim. That will be your best gift in this holiday. So if you want to become Muslim, there's two testimonies that you say, which is I broke it down for you, the two pillars. I bear witness, there's no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness, Muhammad the Messenger of Allah. And you start a new life, new page, but it's a new page, which is pure page with your creator. Prophet Muhammad said, when, when a person becomes a Muslim, all his sins, all his sins forgiven, except one thing, what is it? Death. Islam is based upon justice. So if you have a debt, you give it back to the person. If you talk something from someone, give it back to him or to her. But whatever between you and Allah will be forgiven. And because many people, they say that the Islam disrespect women, rather Islam raise women. Islam uh, show respect to women. A man came to Prophet Muhammad, our Prophet. He said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who should deserve my companionship more? Who should I be more friends toward and respectful toward? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your father. So three times, your mother. You know, that's why Allah says, Muhammad Ta'ala mentioned the Quran about those who goes around and disrespect their, their mothers. Remember, she called you for nine months. Remember your mother, she couldn't sleep because of you. Because of us, all of us. So now when you become a man or a woman, we disrespect your mother. That's what Prophet Muhammad said. Rather, Allah said in the Quran, Allah said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That your Lord, the creed, you should worship no one except Him and to be good to your parents. Understand? So this is the beauty of Islam. This is what I'm calling you to, which makes sense to you, is clear to you. Everything that people are saying against Islam is a pure lie because they want to misguide the people. So if you want to become Muslim, if you already say yes, then I will say to you what, uh, the, the, the test to it. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. You know, the two testimonies, especially about the parents. The two testimony, then you are up to you. I'm saying, look, on the condition, you said it makes sense to me. Is it clear? That is the truth. Then I will invite you to become Muslim. You want to become Muslim? It makes sense. It does make sense. It's the truth. Yeah, and I enjoy debating it. Yes. Yeah. So I advise you to become Muslim, well, lie, that's the best thing. Yeah. That's why when a person becomes a Muslim, what we say, we don't say it's a convert, we say it's a revert, meaning you're going back to your original state. The original state that you were born with to worship your creator, not to be following just desires and following everything. Because like I said, one day we're going to live this life, this life like a bridge. Allah mentioned that well, the true life is the life of paradise. Wahiya al-hayawanu. What is here means the true life, the, the true meaning of life is that life doesn't end, which is the life of paradise. And Islam is based upon justice, as I, like I said. Allah said in the Quran, Woman a'aradu, mimman dhukkira bi ayati rabbihi, woman afun, woman adlamu, mimman dhukkira bi ayati rabbihi, thumma a'aradu anha, inna min al mujrimina muntaqimun. Allah said, Who is more unjust? Who is more than uh, uh, the one who's been reminded and uh, remembered Allah's signs and verses, but he turns away from it arrogantly. 
then indeed we will take our revenge from the arrogant ones. What, what is our, uh, revenge here? I mean the revenge that Allah created you. Allah gave you everything, but He asked one thing, is to follow His teaching, but you turn away from it because you've been deceived by this life, which is a temporary life, then don't blame, you, don't blame no one on the day of judgment or in the hellfire because Allah is the most just. But now you have the choice. That's why if someone died, also, afterlife. Yeah, afterlife. Go on. Yeah. Very important. Because I've been talking for long, so you can ask questions. No doubt. Yes, no doubt. In Islam, afterlife, that's why this life is like a means. This, now, this life is not the, the asal, meaning it's not the foundation. So Allah did not create, it, create us for this life. He created this life for us. So what it means is like imagine you have a box to save money. You know? So what you do, you're not going to whole day look, look into the box. It's nice. You're not putting nothing in there. No, that box is there for a reason, to save the money, to put money to save it for your future, you understand? Likewise, this love is like a box. So either you're going to put an evil deed or a good deed, and nothing will come of you inside the grave. That's what Prophet Muhammad said, visit the graveyard. Why the graveyard? Those people who are buried in those graves, they were like you and I speaking and walking and enjoying their lives. But today they are in the graves when it's too late for them. You know, he said, visit the graves because, because the graves, the graveyard, it gives you the real meaning, the true meaning of life, what life means. You know, likewise, so Prophet true, Muhammad, yeah. True, but afterlife is where you lose me. How? I don't believe afterlife. So what happened to Hitler then? I... <laughs> what happened I to Stalin? Bad things, but... But, how, but you don't believe the, the here after? Uh, I believe that uh, when you die, it ends. Nothingness. So that, no, no, okay, the one who gave you life in the beginning, is he able to bring you back? No. He's able to bring you back. If I made the phone... See, that's a fundamental difference. Okay, keep going. How? Okay, let's let see rationally, yeah? So now, if, if I made the phone, okay, and the phone broke, or the phone, uh, can, I make another, can I make the same phone? I can make the same phone, because I had the ability to make the phone. That's why Allah utilized intellectual arguments to prove to us about the hereafter. Because you have similar belief of the Arab pagans that Prophet Muhammad came with. Yeah, that I can conceive of it. Yeah, yeah, true. of course, the, the reality. You're saying because I can conceive of it, I, yeah. was, I was gifted with the fact that it exists. Yeah, well, but what, what, what I'm saying, I'm saying, look, there is no way intellectually we can stand here, say, uh, say after life will not happen. But my point here is, if we already establish that this Quran or Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet, logically speaking, that message he came with, the book that he came with, from the information that has been mentioned about the hereafter. And one of the, the beauty about the hereafter, Stalin, Mo, the Chinese, uh, it was a Chinese, yeah, the Chinese tyrant, yeah? Uh, Hitler, none of these guys, they're gonna get away with it, what, happened, what they did to the innocent people. Allah sent the Quran, uh, uh, the other verse, فَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلٌ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرْهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Allah said, do not think Allah, the creator of everything, is unaware of what the evil doers they're doing. Rather, Allah has appointed a day for them on that day when they will be humiliated. On that day when the poor one will get his justice. That is an attractive idea. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's uh, attractive I would like, truth. I would like that. Yeah, but it's attractive truth. It's That's why. Not truth to everyone. No, to everyone. You preach yourself. Yeah. You don't let so, anyone so, else speak. You're preaching your word, but not letting anyone else speak. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's great. You say it's the truth. That's great. It's your truth. It's not her truth. You can't preach your truth to her as the only truth. You finished? That's the joy of religion. You let her speak. Okay. You don't let her speak. You finished? You fin no, I'm not finished. Well, yeah, well, huh? I'm not finished. Okay, you came here. I'm going to ask her. Did I, did, did I let you speak? Um, I've asked questions. Yes. I've been here for 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes. Because she, she, I've been here for 30 minutes. Okay. She has spoken for all of four or five. There's no problem that with that. It's not a debate. It's that not debate. debate. Well, it's not debate. We, debate. we don't get debate. You're preaching. preaching. I'm preaching oh, to her. Yeah. You're preaching. You're converting. Okay. Yeah, no. Do you want to be converted to Islam? Look, he's just being attacked. She's not being. Watch, watch, watch. No, I'm sorry. But no, wait, wait. Converted to Islam? Who said we're going to force her? We're uh, speaking to her. You asked her about seven minutes ago. You asked her. Hold on. No, no, no. I can leave him. No, I left him. Look, look, look. What we're going to show him? We're going to show him. No, no, wait, wait. We're going to show him. He's going to let him speak because. Why that speak is cool. No doubt about that. But okay, he's gonna now we're yeah. gonna start speaking okay. and me allowing him. I'm not allowed he's, to speak because you're keep you keep talking. No, I, 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 but you 
you're not, you're not allowed to speak too. And it's my circle, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, speak, speak. Speak, anyway, let me speak. Go, right go on. No, go ahead, speak. No, it's fine. If you want this circle to be yours and only yours, and no one else can have it. So that is fine if that is what you wish. But don't call it a circle if it's only yours. I'm not wishing you that. allow someone else to speak to so, have their own word. No problem. Correct? It's true. And that's what she's been saying. She's been asking questions. That's what she said to me. I cannot believe in the hereafter. Yeah. And what did I do? Did I use a knife? I said, no, believe in the hereafter. <laughs> did I use a spoon? No, I didn't use that. I said, no, sister, so, look, so, allow me to speak. No, allow me to speak. You try, try to come here to tell ahead. us I'm not letting people. So what I said, I said, look, sister, I'm explaining to you naturally, logically, rationally, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's up to you to accept the truth or not, understand? And that's the beauty of Islam. Islam, that's why historically speaking, the only religion that many people accept without force is Islam. As for Christianity and uh, uh, communism and atheism, where it was forced upon people, like the French did to my Muslim brothers and sisters in France. Mm -hmm. So my sister, like I said, you're standing here, say whatever you like. Yeah. You understand? And leave whenever I want. That's right? it. That's, that's it. Thank that's you very much. Yeah. What I can do, maybe I can give you something to read or watch the video again, our channel. Do you? What is your channel? Our channel. Do you ask that one? Well, should I write it for you? Let me write yeah. it for you. Okay. It was my pleasure speaking to you, you. and I had a beautiful conversation. Yes. yes yeah. Let me. Uh, do you have a paper it's very or something? Enlightening, of course not. Uh, uh, <laughs> what, paper? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Paper. And thank you for giving me your time. Yeah, enjoy. Thank it. you for. You thank know you very I much. Did. Thanks. Um, here's a paper. There we go, yes. Here we go. There we go. Thank you. So this is the US. Sorry, my writing is very bad. Yeah. D U S D A W A H. Yes, and this is my name. Shamsi, who let people speak. <laughs> Thank you. Take care of yourself. Have a nice sister. Have a nice day. You want to come for speak? Absolutely not. You only want to speak about your truth. Well, you, you said there's only true one truth. Anyway, I believe in religion, period. So therefore, uh, have a nice evening, by the way. Well, Take you. care of yourself. Thank you very much. You see some handle what happened. Look, we let him speak. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Look, you know, you know, this guy. He's going to be regretful in Jahannam. If he doesn't believe. Well, that's the reality. You know, there's a story, I'll tell you, my brothers and sisters. You know, there's a story that happened at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Someone became Muslim. So he left Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He met who? He met Abu Jahl. Abu, he said, Abu, Abu Jahl, I became Muslim. He said, how dare you? He's, he's manipulating you. He left Islam. He left what? Islam. The guy left Islam. He just took Shahada. Literally, two seconds later, he left Islam. Who lost? Not Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He lost. Now there's no hope. I'm doing what is upon us to convey the message, clarify to her the truth, break it down for her, showing her what Islam is the truth. The end of the day, we accept you want to accept Islam or not, it's up to her. And we ask Allah to guide her. Uh, but he didn't like it. He said, even this argument is truth to you. So I'll ask him that statement, truth to me, is it true or false? Because if you say it's true, therefore there is a truth. You see, this argument of the, even some Muslims, and I'll tell you this, once I was at the dawah table, giving a dawah to this Hindu uh, girl, and there was a Muslim girl over, and she said, Akhi, the truth to you, but she has her own truth. No, the truth is not, the truth doesn't not divide, especially divide in the way, go against each other, no. There's only one truth. Shamsi is standing right now, speaking in speaker's corner. You can say to me, that's true to Jamal, because he said that. Therefore, I believe Shamsi is in a grave dead. <laughs> and we, and if, you know what's happened? If I don't accept that opinion, you are uh, what you call extremist. <laughs> no, you are Majnoon, not extremist. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Am Allah give us Hassan al-Khatima? You know, Barakallah. Where is Hassan? Hassan? Everyone. Am I wujud? That was a nice conversation, man. You know, you know, you know, atheism, atheists, they are the big supporters of the tyrants. Let me ask you why. Why the atheists are the biggest supporters of the tyrants? Why? I'll tell you why. Because atheists, they believe after you die is nothing. So therefore, the tyrant is going to do whatever he's going to like. He's going to rape, kill, murder, and everything. You see, because he's going to think, thank you very much, atheism. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna, because, uh, and there's a Muslim, they said the Muslim school I met with the atheist. So a Muslim school said to the atheist, imagine you die. Okay, you don't want to believe, but ask for the sake of argument. Imagine you die and you stand before God. And God said to you, oh, so and so, why you rejected me? And the hell fire in front of you. What will happen to you? He said, no, no, no. The atheist said to the Muslim, let me ask you. He said, what will happen to you, oh Muslim? You've been staying away from the haram and you die and there's nothing. He said, I will not feel nothing because there's nothing. 
I don't regret. It's nothing, but you will regret. I'm not going to regret. It's nothing. So I'm, I'm not regret. I'm not going to regret, but you will regret. So you are more, more in danger than me for the sake of argument. Because we're not in danger. Alhamdulillah, I believe in Allah and His Messenger. Do you understand that? So you are in danger. You are in a worse situation. Because if at the end I become a dust, what? Well, dust regret? Alhamdulillah. Barakallah fi kum, mashallah. It's a nice day today. But look, Akhir, subhanAllah, Shaytana, inna arsanna shayateena al kafirin ta uzzum azza. He comes. Salam alaikum, Akhir. How are you, man? Shalom. How are you, brother? You right? Shalom. Oh, mashallah. I haven't seen you for a long time. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Everything is good? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, 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 uh, look, subhanAllah, we're speaking to her. He came. Let us speak. I was letting her speak. But of course, because I'm preaching to her, I'm trying to break it down for her. I'm giving the examples. That's it. Alhamdulillah, what do you, and this is the beauty of Islam. You know, some haters of Islam, they, they, they are committing suicide. When they see Islam spreading in the Western world without using a spoon or a knife or a fork. Nothing. People accept Islam because they keep saying, and they know the only religion that will spread, any, the only religion that will not spread by force is Islam. Christianity was forced upon people. And no one tried to deny the Inquisition court in Spain. How the Muslims were burnt alive by the Christians. Because they want to believe, you know? Rather, some Christian families in Andalusia, they were helping the Muslims and hiding them. Because they say, when we're living under you, you treat us nice. Subhanallah. Likewise, communism. Communism based upon atheism, forcing people, the Muslims, killing them. Forcing people to accept it. So, Alhamdulillah, Islam, you accept Alhamdulillah, yes. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakumullah khayran. Wa sallallahu nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam sima kathir.